Hey everybody, good morning, it's Rob Moffat. Guys, I know you're probably sick to death <laughs> of hand sanitizer videos. If you go to Google search, there's about 26 and a half million searches for hand sanitizer. And I was thinking, why should I make a video about hand sanitizers? Haven't everybody already made all the videos that they can make? If you go to YouTube, I started looking. There are a lot of videos on hand sanitizer, but almost all of them are on videos using the aloe vera i was thinking why not make a video that doesn't use aloe vera second of all not all the videos but a large amount of videos i watched were very inaccurate they weren't giving correct information so i thought why not also go to like someplace that's an authority on the subject and use their formula that's what we're going to do this morning we're going to go to the world health organization and make their formula to make our hand sanitizer. It's very simple. Guys, I've been, I worked in chemistry and manufacturing for 17 years. You don't need any experience to make this. If you know how to make jello, you can make this. There's two formulas that they have on the site. I'll leave a link to it in the video description. One is to use ethanol, and the other one is to use isopropyl alcohol. We're going to be using a 99% alcohol, isopropyl, in this formula. Now, the formula they give is to make 10 liters. We're not going to make 10 liters. We're going to make one liter. Now, you don't need any equipment that you wouldn't normally have in the house. I was thinking about that a lot of people don't have uh, graduated cylinders or pipettes or things to measure. But So if you have basic cooking utensils, you can do this. And if you don't, I'll even show you how you can make your own graduated containers. Now, we're going to be using the hydrogen peroxide 3%. 99% alcohol and the glycerin I think either either 88 or 89 percent we're going to be using one tablespoon which is 15 ml just in case you were to change your formula and make a smaller amount you might need different volumes and I just laid these spoons out here it's kind of confusing you don't really need these spoons but if you did need to use different amounts in mls you could use uh, measuring spoons this is a teaspoon which is 5 mls a half a teaspoon is two and a half mls or milliliters and one quarter of a teaspoon is 1.25 milliliters or mls so we're just going to be using the tablespoon now let's look at something else here if you don't have a container to make your liter of solution in which i do measured off in uh, milliliters you can make your own if you have a scale if you have a scale that measures in grams, you can make your own uh, measuring device. Now, scientifically, you would use water at 20 degrees centigrade, which is, I think, what is it, 76 or 78 degrees Fahrenheit. And then you would add water into your container until you got to 750 and make a mark. That would tell you how much alcohol to add. And you do the same thing. There's 750 on the scale. And we've got 750 grams on the scale and 750 mls in the container they're equivalent now we want to go to 1000 if you have a container but it doesn't have any markings on it it's not graduated if you put it on the scale and went to 1000 made a mark you would know when you were at one liter if you made a mark here you'd know when you went to 750 because that's where green at first is the alcohol so I hope I haven't confused you. This was just to tell you how if you didn't have a graduated container, you could make your own if you had a scale that measured in grams. And if you had some water that was uh, approximately room temperature, I think uh, it's uh, 68 degrees, I think, 68, 20 degrees Celsius and 68 degrees Fahrenheit. And that was showing the scale was at 1,000 when we had 1,000 mLs in the container. Now, how do you know your scale is accurate? You can get some coins that you know the uh, weight. My coins in the United States, uh, my quarters, are 56.7 grams if they're made after 1965. So for 10 coins, that's pretty accurate. So let's get started. This is our formula. We're not going to use the ethanol formula. We're going to use isopropyl formula. This is to make 10 liters, but we're making one tenth. 
So we'll change 7,515 7, mLs to 751 mLs of alcohol. We'll change 417 mLs to 41.7, which is three tablespoons. And we'll change the glycerol from 145 to 14.5, one-tenth. Because this is to make 10 liters, we want to make one liter. And we know it's three tablespoons because one tablespoon is 15 ml, so three tablespoons would be 45, which is close enough to 41.7 for our purposes. Also, 14 half ml is one tablespoon, 15. Once again, one tablespoon of glycerol is close enough for our purposes. Also, here's the measurements of the spoons I talked about earlier, and how much the quarters weigh. And 20 degrees centigrade equals 68 degrees Fahrenheit if you're measuring out the water to graduate your own containers for measurement purposes. And finally, once again, 750 ml of alcohol, 42 ml or 3 tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide, and 14.5 ml, 1 tablespoon of glycerol in the container. Then we're going to finish by adding water till we get to 1,000 ml, or QS to 1 liter. So let's get started. There's Mr. Alcohol, 99%. We're going to go to 750. Now, hydrogen peroxide, we're going to add three tablespoons. Remember, 15 mLs each. Three tablespoons. And lastly, we're going to add the glycerin. One tablespoon. Now, the glycerin is very viscous. It sticks to the spoon. You might want to rinse it off in the container or let it drip long enough. Then, we're going to use distilled water or water's been boiled and cooled. The reason we're using distilled water, you don't want any precipitant or any, uh, uh, any matter floating around in there. Also, you don't want any, more importantly, any bacteria spores. The hydrogen peroxide is being added to kill bacteria spores, not to kill any viruses. That's what the alcohol does. The hydrogen peroxide is just to make sure there were any bacteria or spores in the container or in the water it will be gotten rid of by the hydrogen peroxide. And that's also why we want to use distilled water, because if it's full of little particulate matter, that's places for the bacteria and viruses to hide. So we've added our three ingredients. This is where we're at now. We're going to finish by going to one liter with water, the distilled water we just showed you. We're done. We've got one liter now. Now we're going to add it to this container, and we're going to label it what it is, What's the percentage of alcohol, 70%, and the date we did it? This is a very good container. It's airtight, watertight, but it's the worst container I could have picked for pouring out into another container. Um, I had to get a dipper to actually pour it into the other container. So when you add your final solution to a storage container, you want something that's easy to pour out. It's also good to be uh, uh, impervious to light so you don't have your uh, hydrogen peroxide degraded because light, hydrogen peroxide is very sensitive to light. It'll become inactive after a while. Also, you want hydrogen peroxide that hasn't been opened up for a long time. We're pouring our solution in here. Now, this is the only uh, spray container I found. It's more like a pump foam container. This is not going to be a gel, so you can put this into a spray container. Like I said, I didn't have a spray container. I had a, uh, a pump, a foam, or gel container, but it, it works okay. But you, it probably worked out better in a spray container. Now, when you put this on your hand, it's not going to be as thick like a gel. It's more like a liquid, but it will um, dry pretty soon. If your hand is sticky, like the first few seconds, don't worry. But if it stays sticky for a very long time, you did something wrong with your formula. Um, it's, it's not going to be uh, the same as the gel, but it will dry. And when you're done, put it in any of your containers, your juice, spray containers, hand sanitizer bottles, reuse them. So that's basically it, guys. I hope this was something helpful to you. I put on new videos every week. been doing it for 13 years. i uh, got a bunch of playlists, different subjects, and put new stuff on every week. Hope it's something helpful to you. And you all stay safe, and hope you're having a happy and blessed Easter. Take care.